up, my G? Yo. How you doing? Good. How you doing, bro? Not too bad. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just uh, talk to you about a few things. Um, I'll let everyone know who's just tapping in. Um, I interviewed uh, you a few days ago, but just let everyone know who's just tapping in your socials and your name again and everything so they could tap in with you. Young Sleep, No Sleep, Rochester, New York. Uh, all social media, Sleep 585. Yeah, for sure. All right, one second, let me just pull this up. Yeah, so I wanted to know a little bit more. Um, I forgot to ask you the other day, but um, what's a little more about Class Murder? Because I, I know he's, uh, you know, I've seen him before doing songs with Benny and a few other people, but, uh, you know, he's really what's popping. Um, where's where's he out of anyway now? Um, you cut out a little bit. What you say? Oh, okay. I was just going to say, um, I've seen, I forgot to ask you before, but I've seen Class Murder, um, his songs and stuff. He did some songs with Benny and a bunch of other people, but... Um, you know, you said he's your cousin, but, uh, you know, where's he from anyway? Is he from New York or? No, he's from Rochester, New York. Same oh, okay. Place. Is he still around Rochester? Um, he, he live OT, but he be in Rochester a lot. Okay, okay. Still, like. Cool. Obviously, most of his family still home. Be here a lot. Be with the homies and stuff, but he, he OT. Cool, cool. Yeah, well, um, can you let some people know, like, some some stories about being with them, like, in the in the lab or, you know, outside of the lab, like, some things that happen or anything? Um, I mean, it's a lot of stories. I, I guess, like, a, a famous one that, you know, he said it in the music as well. Um, One time we was in the car, I was driving, and uh, we pulled up to a, um, a shorty house. And um, I front of her house, and the cops was right behind us, and they they um end up up to the window and stuff, and wanted to ask us like what we was doing and everything. We told them, and they said if we search this car, we are not gonna find anything, are we? And uh, we like nah, but if they just searched the car, we probably would have um sitting down for a little minute. Oh, I see, I see. So without going into detail, it was something in the car, and they said something like, "If we search this car, we gonna find something." Nah, and they would have searched the car, they would have found. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Something. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. Well. Um. And uh, anything else you could say, stories or anything? Yeah, I mean, you know, we start rapping at the same time. I'm I'm actually like three days older than class, but. You know, he's been a dude that's been grinding a long time. He, he always been nice, like, he was, as a young kid. Like, you, you probably heard of Smack DVD, right? Yeah. Today, we had something in Rochester called Slap DVD. So that was our big DVD in Rochester. And him at 13 years old, he was on it. I think he was even on a front cover once, like six, seven volumes. So that lets you know he was able to hold his own with grown men that were local legends or dudes that's well popular. He, he was on those things, so he always been able to rap, like, that's so all. He always been nice, but then, obviously, nowadays, he do, like, like New York drill sound, but a lot of people know, like, if you're not all the way familiar with him, like, he started with bars and stuff. He could still rap crazy, like, he could still do that, but I know a lot of people know him for the drill rap right now, but class came, he from that era of, like, really spitting crazy bars and shit like that, and at any point to come down to it, he, he can do that. Yeah, Better yeah. Than most niggas. Yeah, for sure. No, I know what you mean. Uh, how was it coming up with him in the studio? Was he a lot different back then? You know, when you seen him back in, a, in the old days with Thirty Eight Special and everything. Um, I say a bit because I know he don't write as much, and I think obviously, uh, he a lot more melodic back in. The, he didn't. He didn't do a whole bunch of melodic. I think once Max B came around, he was a big Max B fan. Well, um. He, he ended up trying like that way, but being melodic and he like, he could run with that, but he didn't always do that. Obviously he, it was, he had like a different type of, uh, stuff as rap, but I think over the years he, he, um, he adjusted to that. Even with Spech, he was starting to get into that lane a little bit, but now it's a lot more, even when he do songs with Spech, he do like, I think when they do songs with Spech, he, um, he do a lot of the hooks on it. And it'd be the melodics, but it'd be on some real hip hop beats. So just a lot of growth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
Well, um, how was it seeing Spe- 38 Special uh, growing up and everything? What was he like, like, and everything? Um, you know, I didn't, I knew, I was, I didn't have a personal relationship, especially a little older than me in class, like, probably a good five years or something like that, but he was one, I think we said in the last interview, he was one of them dudes who, like, was that guy in the town, even before, like, where he at now, just in Rochester, he he was a dude that made a lot of noise when he was, like, 19, 20, he, he, uh, one of his first CDs, I think was, um, out on bell and that kind of set the standard for a lot of music in our in our city. Yeah. He used, it was a lot of industry beats at it, but he was like killing them. And that's the actually that's the first time I actually heard of well one of the first times I heard of Benny was the best song. I heard his name on the on the track and then I got familiar with Special start doing my read on him and stuff like that. And um, you know, Special Special came a long way too. He he, he from the and um he from the uh, hood called like Charlie Avenue and it's like it's it's pretty real over there today. Like you, you got to be able to hold your own over there. Like uh, I got family from over there that uh, it's in that loop. And like one of my cousins, like he got a, on one of his bars. He's like, even if you pussy, you still got to fight. Just how it is. Like you could oh, be yeah. someone soft or who don't want trouble. Like you you want to stay, but you got to be able to hold your own, or you got to be willing to fight. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I get viewers from all around the world, like even from France or wherever. So, um, can you tell everybody anyway what what block did you originally grow up in? And you don't have to say where you're from now. That's not what I mean. But where were you originally from, and how was it like over there? Um, I'm not really originally from a block. I'm from a, a side. I'm from the side of Rochester, New York. We, it's pretty real. Like we got like North Side, South Side, West Side, and East Side. That's how we kind of split up. But I'm from like the Dewey Avenue area. My brother from Ray Bean, so. I guess like being in Dewey is kind of like the main areas I'm from, but like I rep the whole the whole North Side. But oh, okay. Those are the two main areas I've been at it, most of my life, and those are two real areas. Like, you, okay. You gotta, like, same way like with Chile Avenue, you got to be able to hold your own. Eight o'clock when the lights is turned on, you you walk down that strip, you, you got to be on point. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, I was gonna ask him, um, how was it with I you know I heard from Black Snatcher special back in the day he used to be like a street dude so I didn't mean like that but I meant like how was he in the lab like cooking up was he freestyling a lot and going off his head or, or you didn't you know you said you were in the studio with him back a long time ago you know with, with your cousin and everything class murder but I was just wondering um yeah special go off the top of the head I, I don't even know if I any special right but I, um he's a person like you know he, he go off his real life experience most of the shit he say is, you know that's that's real life so he don't he not a person not using a pen to the pad like that. He oh, yeah, never yeah. come to his mind. He That's going in. The thing about special too, I, I like to say is like he could rhyme one word. And he get right. He could go off that one word for sixteen bars or even longer. Like it take a lot of talent like that. You would think it's kind of simple, but it's not. It's it's a hard thing to do. Like you say one thing and then you rhyme that one thing over and over. Like you rhyme off that one word over and over. Or 16 bars, 20 bars, like that, you know, that that takes a lot. I seen J.R. Ryder give special uh, credit for that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I was wondering, um, how was it working or seeing uh, Max B? You know, uh, I didn't uh, ask you before, but, um, you know, what did you, were you ever around him or anything? Um, not in like a, a setting to really get like the vibe with him. Um, when I was younger, with Club, um, Max came to Rochester. He came to our uh, this place called the Army, which is like our big venue. Well, like one of our big venues at home, like three thousand. I think I said I performed there before with Meek Mill, and Kiss. But Max came there off the um, the buzz. He was getting off of mixtapes, and uh, DJ Lazy K was the um, was the DJ. And uh, class and her had a really good relation. Like uh, Lazy was trying to like somewhat sign class or like have class like really fuck with her. And uh, me and class probably like 17 at the time. We weren't even old enough to really be in the venue, but we got in and we we um ended up carrying CDs for Lazy K to get in. So we carried some CDs and uh, Max performed. We ended up being on stage with him and shit. But that that was really it. Okay. But I had the Max on the phone before um with his manager at the time because I was getting a shout out from him. So I told him like you know I fuck with your music. I appreciate you and everything. And um, when I was on the phone with him, he actually was getting his life suspended. So that was kind of a cool thing. Like, 
That's something he put in the music. I was actually on the phone when that happened. I, you cut out. What did you say about the music? Or what did you say happened? I was on when Max B when uh the police uh ended up fucking with him and um they suspended his license. Oh, okay. Okay. You were on the phone with him when that happened? Yeah, him oh, and his wow. manager. Oh, okay. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> so I was wondering, well, well, what? Yeah, free the wave, man, for sure. Free Max B. Um, I was wondering, um, what did uh, what did Class Murder? What advice did he give to you? Because I know he's really doing his thing right now. You know, he's really big time. You know what I'm saying? Um, like the same advice you always just say, like, go higher, man. Go for yours. Like, we don't talk as much as we did. I mean, that's family, regardless. And obviously, he's doing a lot of stuff. But you know, we talk. A couple of times out of the year and stuff like birthdays and holidays and shit, just checking up on each other. But when we do talk, it's just, you know, he like he just said like, you know, I'm proud of you. Like, keep going. You know, it's a grind. Obviously, with him, it's a grind. Even it took him a long time to get to this. And he was telling me that he had a song that he thought was gonna really shake shit, and it would end up being the Big H song with Passing Over. Oh yeah, um, free cast. You no, know, oh, yeah. Yeah, his advice to me is just keep always work. That's yeah. what you gotta do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, you know, I got the you know that um, I'm willing to do what it takes to to make it happen. It's just obviously keep going, don't stop. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and have you been going harder since you put out all those songs? You know, I was just wondering. Um, yeah, I was just I was just asking because I really like those recent songs you put out. You know. Yeah, I have, man. Like I said, I got I got a lot of stuff to cut that, like I think. Um, could really make a lot of noise. I got something in the cut that I think has a lot of potential. Obviously, I'm going off the Dirt Low song right now, which I said I've um, got like 38 views on YouTube, which is doing extremely well in two months. But I got something I feel is two times bigger than that. So, God willing, if, if that, that works out well for me, then, you know, um, I got other music. I feel like I've been doing this a long time, since 12 years old. I mean, I'm, I just touched my 30s and I still feel like I'm still in my prime because I'm still getting better. Like even going through this, like I haven't reached my my peak yet. I'm still learning, how, you know, it just flows and be more creative and all this and that. Where a lot of rappers, when they get older, they dying. I'm I'm just getting better and better. So I think that's a, that's real scary for people. And I feel like when I'm on my A game, I I can hold my own. Anybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Um, what's what's been your motivation to turn up even even more in, in recently? You know what I'm saying? Say one more time. What's been your motivation to turn up even more recently? I was just wondering. Is it... uh, my motive always been um, people not believing in me. Nobody ever really believed in me like that. You, you know, you got your whole circle that say they do, and maybe at the time they do, but you know, when you get older and people have kids and families and shit, that shit fade out. And like going to shows, like I, it's been times where I had five people in the crowd, it's been times I had eight people in the crowd. Mine is just the motivation to prove people wrong. Like that's the shit that that drives me. Like. I love to, I love to prove people wrong. I love the people who doubt me to see me growing and growing. Like people who I used to ask for features that decline me, and then later in life they ask me for features. Yeah. That's the shit that kind of like keep me going. I'm the underdog. I like being the underdog. I like me look like the the un the undoable, the like the shit that's that can't happen. I make it happen. Shit that drives me. Yeah, me too. I totally agree. I deal with the same thing sometimes too. Totally. Um, I was wondering, um, how was it, uh, with Dave East? I don't think we talked about him being in the lab, but, uh, how was it? I know you've been with him in the studio and stuff. How was, how was he? Was he just fr go freestyling and everything? And how was that? I don't think we mentioned that, but I could be wrong. But... Um, that was a cool thing. I opened up for East once and, um, we talked in the, at the end of the show, took a pic and all that. And he asked me where I was from. You know, we was chopping up whatever, but he was high as a bitch. So that conversation was kind of but when I was in the studio with him, um, I think I played two songs for him, and he was fucked, man. Like he was bobbing his head higher. Even his his brother, his brother was like making the faces, like, like this, like this. Ah, this that's nigga nice. And then, and then he said, it was like, yo, you got some shit, low. Like he just, you no, know, he gave me, he showed me love, and that's all I had. And like, I appreciate him listening to the music. I appreciate like head nods and him telling me he fucked with my shit and all that. That's all I needed. That's what's up, man. That's a good story. What songs were you playing for him? Do you remember? Um, I played What If, which you haven't heard yet, which is crazy. I could send that to you. Okay. And I played Different, which I did hear, which, I got, like I said, Different has been giving, that's the song that 
the last year got a lot of attention from a lot of people. But it's I got this song called What If It's Like Jada Kiss Why? And like, what if this situation happened? Like I say, like, what if like Aaliyah never took that flight? I say like, what if um, Dame Dash never stopped fucking with The Rock? Or, like all this other shit. Like it's, it's a really dope song. It's like a real personal, like, it's a deep song, but a lot of people fuck with it. Uh, that's what's up, man. And what did you say that uh, you alluded to a newer song you had that that's that's really some fire stuff? What's that one called? Are you working on? Say it one more time. You alluded um, a few minutes ago to like a newer song you're working on that's some really hot stuff. What's that one called or what's it about? Uh, it's called One Up. It's featuring Sue Surf, battle rapper. and um, Oh, it's Sue it's Surf? Rap. Yeah, Sue Surf is oh, one. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, he, yeah he's hot. Yeah, sure. Surf. Yeah, surf get busy. Um, he yeah. got a crazy, crazy cadence, and um, you know a lot of people fuck with him. Like he, he a real dude. And then I got my cousin Ishmael Raps. He on the hook, bodies it. It's like a melodic hook, but it's a soulful beat. I'm talking so, like talking that that talk on there, like crazy bars, but also talking real life shit. And um, same thing with um, with surf and like. Guys, let me. Everybody that heard it said, "Like it's out of here." East ain't hear that. Uh, Dirk Low heard that. Dirk was impressed with that. Uh, okay, that's what's up. How was it to get that surf feature? Oh, uh, it was dope as a bitch, man. You know, I reached out to him, and um, actually, I was supposed to do a song, uh, surf like a year ago, and it just ain't happened. He came to Rochester, and um, damn, I wish I'd have got it done because a uh, um, a homie from here got a, a joint done with him. They did a video night too. I'm like fuck, and then um, months later, um, I heard this beat, and actually the song that Surf on a, a few other people was supposed to be on that. Actually, Class Murder was to be on that. He didn't end up getting on it. Surf ended up getting on it instead. But getting this joint with Surf, like you know, that's dope as a bitch because I'm a, I really fuck with his music. So, you know, it's dope to work with other dope artists and who's that uh got rank in the game. Okay, is that a TM NYC exclusive? Tell me about it. Tell us about that. What's the exclusive part? No, telling us about the the, the surf song because I didn't know you had that. Is that the first person you told? On camera for interviews. Oh, okay, cool. That's what's up, man. So that is exclusive. Yeah, you got awesome. exclusive. Appreciate right it, there. brother. And uh, and what and you got an exclusive who was supposed to be on it too? The what? You got the exclusive of who was supposed to be on it too? Oh, okay, that's what's up, man. When can people expect that? You have any idea in a few months or a few weeks or when? I gotta hear that, brother. I can't believe you got you're getting some good features, man. God damn, people is really messing with yeah. you. Yeah, they ain't even it. I think um, besides C, besides people, Surf probably would be the biggest one. Out of him alone, I don't know, but I got some more of them uh, features in the cup. But um, I say in April, no later than May. That that song nice. would be out. But um, I could probably send that to you a little early. Just don't okay. share that. But okay, I, nice. Yeah, I gotta hear like, that, bro. It's just recent, but yeah, like it's it's dope, man. For sure, yeah, definitely. Um, I was wondering, can we expect maybe a track with you and Piff? I know you're going on tour with them, but can we maybe expect that possibly? That's definitely happened. Um, oh, that's what's when up. Piff was, when Piff was just in New, um, which is like 40 minutes away from Rochester, me, him, uh, Black Sinatra, and a couple other home show, uh, Sinatra ended up bringing them to Newark. Real quick, and me and Piff was talking. He's like, "Yo, you want in?" I said, "Bro, I already know." <laughs> so that's that's man that's mandatory. Like that's gonna happen. It's the type of dude I don't force nothing. Like I ain't just doing a song just because. Like, oh, you my man. Like, oh, let's like you know, if we in the studio, then yeah, fuck it. But we just out in public. But when I'm something for Piff, it's going to get done. I actually got an idea in my head for him that would be really dope. I'm just work waiting on the beat to kind of get retweaked a little bit. I got a um, my homie, he worked a uh, beat. Um, he sampled a, a classic Biggie beat for me. I'm, I'm waiting for him to retweak it a bit. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Cool. That's awesome. Can't wait to hear that stuff. That's pretty good. I was wondering... Shout out um, to Piff. That's my dog. Oh, for sure, man. Piff goes crazy. He's definitely one of my favorites, for sure. I really like him, definitely. He really does his thing. Um, I was wondering, um, what did, uh, you know, in that video with uh, Nature, and I know Piff was in it, I was wondering, what were your words with uh, with, with Nature? I don't think uh, you said, uh, what did he say, say say to you and stuff? Oh, wait, before we go on, 
Sorry, uh, what did what did Surf say about you? I was just wondering. Did he really like your stuff, and he's a fan and everything? I was wondering. Did he hear your I mean, verse he on the track? It. Yeah, the only thing we, me and Surf ain't really build all the way like that because that I most of these songs I send off and we ain't shoot no video yet. So once we shoot a video, like we get to really build like that. But um, he fuck with it, but we get in no deep conversation. He just said it was dope. Okay, you plan on doing a video with Surf? I plan on it. I'm just, you know, obviously it's, it's business stuff and stuff yeah. behind the scenes that worked out, but I definitely plan on doing it. Yeah, uh, that's what's up, man. I was wondering, yeah. So what did uh, what did Nature say about your raps and everything when you did that track with him? Uh, nature, Nature, uh, Nature fucked with me heavy. You know what's funny is I think we talked about it a little bit in the other interview. Um, I kind of set that feature up for me, Nature and Sinatra to do it, but once I set it up, I kind of let Sinatra like headboard that like he kind of like took uh control of that like doing everything like he met up with nature and built with him a little bit more and obviously i did my verse but by the time we did the video i think is when nature really really listened to the verse i mean he might have listened to the verse before that by 100 percent sure but when we shot the video and i was rapping my verse he was looking at me like oh like yeah i, I really get busy bro because i ain't gonna lie when he first seen me i think he just looked at me like uh Another nigga who might have paid me to get on the joint, and who knows? <laughs> but once I start rapping my verse, he's like, "Oh shit!" Like you get busy. I'm like, "Good luck, bro." I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I definitely appreciate. Like I'm a nigga who really get busy. Like yeah, that's a fact. You really do. And you know, he was he he was tuned. We was talking like classic history shit, and like um, he was riding in the car with me, and like I think Raekwon was just about to call him, and I was in the car when Raekwon was calling him, and um. Somebody legendary was calling them and shit, but that was dope as a bitch to even be in the whip with nature and others calling them and shit. And I'm 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 driving around the city. Yeah, yeah, Queensbridge projects and everything. Yeah, legendary spot. Yeah, what did uh? So what I was wondering, what did Piff say to you? Because I know he's in that video. What did he say about you? You heard the song and everything. I assume. What did he say? Piff up with it. He said it's tough. That's that's good. It right, wasn't cool. a lot of long conversation, but it was obviously like you know um. We met and uh, we, like we kind of clicked right away. And he was the bars. He like you know I get busy. He get busy. A dude on his grind. Yeah, he in the camp, but he still got work. You know, I got affiliations with certain people, but I still got to work too. Ain't nobody go hands off. You still got to work for your opportunities as well. You know, he yeah. an underdog. He yeah. from a famous projects, but he still got to work. He, you know. He got to live up to his projects. You know, he come from Queensbridge. Nas, yeah, Nas and everything. Yeah, Tom, totally. Yeah, Havoc, yeah. Uh, Capone. Come on, Mob Deep, CNN, yeah. like, yeah. Roxanne Chate, like, Nature, Court Mega, it go on and on. Yeah. Yeah, totally. He the new way for that, so. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. I was wondering, um, what was like some of your best memories, like either times in music or growing up or both, like you know, and and paint that picture for people who weren't there. You know what I mean? Like, like what was really that like when you were just in the zone and and you know, I, you know, I was just I was just wondering, you know, what was some of your best times? And you, yeah, music or life or, or whatever, just like it's like growing up or you know, you being in the studio or or you know, it's up to you. I was just wondering. Um, some of my best memories, I was my being born is hands down number one for me. Uh, besides my son being born, um, me and Kiss and opening up for Kiss and Diva because the story behind that is my brother going to the locks without my brother. Like, I wouldn't have been, been a big, big old locks fan that I'm like, he put me on. Like, I heard we are the streets because of my brother playing it. And when my brother passed, you know, obviously that was my big influence. So that shit hurt me. You know, I'm scarred for life. So meeting them and opening up for them, it, it made me think of my brother right away as soon as I got off stage. And one of those, like, one, one of the homies that day one with me, like, yo, how did it feel open up for kissing? I'm like, bro, that, sh that shit was everything to me. Like, I, it made me think of my brother right away. Like, damn, like, he put me on to them. Like, and look, look, years later, I'm opening up for them. He, he dared to experience that, mem that moment with me. Yeah, yeah, I totally feel what you mean. That that's, must have been great. Yeah, totally. Cool. What what's some things that you learned in the in the rap game that that you didn't know before? You know, like or things you learned. 
One more time. What's some things you learned in the rap game that you didn't know or, or that people taught you that was, like, really good that we didn't talk about? Or really interesting things? Um, I think I had to my own, even though you should know that. But I think once you really, really in it, you learn more that this is a business. Yeah. And talent is the fuck, it's like the minimum of this shit. Like, out of politics, being nice don't mean shit in the music industry at all. I hate to say it like, it's a million rappers in the game. It's a million nice rappers in the game that you would never hear a day in your life really give a fuck because being nice don't mean shit. Like, if you don't invest in your career, it's nothing. It's a lot of niggas that's mediocre that's winning right now because they got great work ethic, they invest in self, and they network their ass off. And that's a lot what you got to do in this game. Yeah. You pretty decent. You can hold your own, whatever. You can... And you got work ethic, and you invest in yourself. You can make it in this shit. It's motherfuckers who outwrap your favors. That's on the fucking corner right now. I promise you. Yeah. But you'll never hear a song from them, or they'll never blow it uh, uh, ever. Like it's we got a lot of local legends here. There's no shade to them because you know a lot of them is big homies to me. But they didn't want it as much. They didn't. They didn't go for it. They ain't believe in themselves to put the money up on them and shit like that. That's why I said this. And this is the most shadiest business, which I learned as well. It's probably other ones too, like this shit, but the music industry is very, very shady. Even when we talk about features and shit, like at a young age, I've been burnt for features where the artist might have burnt me for the features or a quote on manager might have took money. It's a lot of politics. Like oh, wow. it's a dirty game. Yeah. You'd be willing to take chances that the next man ain't willing to take, and it's not a guarantee that it's going out. I know people who invested quarter million dollars in the rap that it didn't work out for. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, totally. Huh. I was wondering, um, what's your thoughts on, uh, on social media? If for music, I probably really wouldn't be on it like that. But I think you have to be on social media when you're in the music or almost any type of business. Um, use it to your advantage, man. Like social media is there to help you. I ain't telling you sell your sell your soul or anything. Like be thirsty for attention, but use it. Like you got a talent, use it. It's a lot of dudes who just rap on Instagram and just rap and they. And if you're really nice and the right motherfucker catch it. You got an opportunity, like the girl, uh, Lele, I think she like a 13 year old girl. She was rapping in the car with her dad. Two, three years later, she got her own show on Nickelodeon. RJ Payne, he started rapping in this next thing you know, like he on like Sway in the Morning, he on these big features and stuff like that. He'll tell you, he kind of started rap, just rapping in this car on, on his phone and the, the shit got big people attention. Now he doing shit with Ice T and got billboards and and Times Square and shit like that. And I, I respect it a lot. So use social media to your advantage. Got to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I know what you mean. Totally. Um, what's your thoughts on uh, COVID and everything? Um, COVID fucked up a lot of shit, man. Yeah. It fucked up a lot of money. Fucked up a lot of opportunities. Um, but I think people realize even with COVID, to go out and get yours. If you sat too long, you... And you were coming up, um, you could lose your opportunity. Like I'm a person, I I had to sit for a minute. I, my son is young, and my shorty, like his mom, wasn't with that shit. Like, but it, it was at a point where I'm like, you know, I gotta go get my. I'm a, I'm still on the grind. I had to sacrifice. It's like when it, we did that nature video, that was in the middle of COVID. When I did the video of hustle and pray with Benny Siegel, that was when COVID first really got on the scene. I went to LA and be around all these people masked up and shit and on, on these planes and all that. That was in the middle of being horrible. I had to take them chances. I had to get the vaccine. I ain't really want to get the vaccine. But my thing is, I'd be damned if I bring something home to my son. So I was willing to risk my life to get the vaccine and chase my dreams and make sure I go out of town and get business done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying, definitely. Um, I was wondering, um, have you ever seen any of my interviews, and which one's your favorite if you saw them? I haven't seen all of them. Um, I watched the Sinatra one, of course, okay. my brother. Um, I watched, I think I watched all that, and I watched the Benny one. The Benny one was a little short. I watched yeah. all that. Okay. Um, and I didn't watch the Piff one. The Piff, 
video. Uh, yeah, but I will, and I'll probably watch the uh, Great Guy one too. Okay, okay. And one other question. Um, I like I said, I get viewers from all around the world, from France or wherever, and uh, and you don't have to speak on it if you don't want to. I'm not like pressing you or nothing, but I was wondering how is the gang situation in Rochester, and like 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 what's that like? Is it bad or 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 anything like that, or is there anything you want to say about it? Um, yeah, it's bad. Um, obviously it's, it's a younger generation thing. Obviously, do even my age like it's dudes who like gang bang and affiliate and stuff, but they don't advertise it as much because they grown but they you know they affiliate or they really about that and stuff like that but they 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 smart about it um obviously the younger crowd they they weigh in like that big ape stuff and like a lot of dudes coming home from prison like they go to prison you know they, they join uh, a gang and stuff in there uh you know it's real big right now um where i'm at blood it's way more bloods than crips but we do got crips here too as well um but yeah get, it's a lot of gang shit here too okay i was wondering um and i don't know if you know the answer or maybe you do but people you know or or people you've worked with before or whatever in rochester are they down to work with other people from from different gangs they're like do some of the problems run so deep because some people have told me either things like they're willing to work with other people you know um it's all about money and other people have said like you know they're only they're just gonna work with their friends or people who's affiliated with them but what's your take on all that from people from here yeah from Rochester yeah um yeah. exactly what you to be honest with you if there is a small circle that people that are willing to work with each other and there's some good dudes don't get me wrong it's, it's a lot of good dudes who got good vibes and stuff that's will for anybody stuff like that but a lot of them dudes is like I guess people would kind of sit her the dudes that's not popping or people like the other uh the rappers that's really copping they don't they look as them like as like the little dudes or dudes that's not up to date and stuff like that and i think the dudes who are really popping in the city or making noise especially like the older crowd that or the lane that i'm in they kind of stick the dudes they fuck with like you said they homeboys or dudes they come up with or they be family members or on some shit or like, um, then you got some that just like if they really think this or they fuck with you, like it can happen. But everybody kind of, not everybody, but a lot of people they know they self where they feel like yo, I'm better than such such one, or my shit buzzing more than them. I sell more vinyls. How would I fuck with them? Such and such. Like I don't need to do a feature with him or him or that person. But then you know, somebody like me, like majority, I'm pretty good. I could kind of like fuck with most of the people in the city, but then it's maybe one or two people like, like I, I haven't reached they level, so they probably feel like, you know, keep working and we'll see type thing. I was wondering who's the people who you who you feel that you might not have reached their level? Are they people out of Rochester? Like who is it? I was wondering. Um, I guess the only person I would really say would be like Spesh. Oh, and okay. It's no knock on that. Cause okay. special, special, you know what I'm saying? Like special that through here, you know. Um, I've been around him. Like I said, I've been around him and shit like that. But for my own career and stuff like that, I don't think he really know. I'm pretty sure he know of my like know of me uh, rapping and shit. But I don't know if he all the way tuned in or check shit. But oh, you know, hold on. I know, know, I know for sure he watches my channel because someone else told me that. Special is watching his interview on my channel, so I know for sure he watches my channel. So maybe you'll see this. <laughs> so what were you saying? Yeah, <laughs> and especially keep his circle real tight. Like he, yeah. he fuck with who he fuck with. I, I'm not saying he won't give props to nobody, but like he got his crew. He, he got TCF Trust come first. Yeah, he focuses on his artists, and that's kind of like where where he is with it, like that. Yeah, you know, I and definitely, I, think, I definitely like your music, so I think that you know. I definitely, I'm, I'm definitely, I like it a lot. So, but you do a, a special feature if you were able to, for sure. Uh, yeah, I would definitely do a yeah. joint with special. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? I think it's gonna happen. I think it's a timing thing. That's what, everything is timing. You know, like I, I'm still getting my ranks up, but as far as the city, I think in my city, like I, I'm up there. Like and people, I, I can't name more than probably five people who I feel like doing as much as me outside of rock. Like I'm, I'm pretty good on the internet. Like. I'm kind of past the Rochester shit, like, you know, I, I eat some buzz and 
tri-state all around the world. Like, there's people in Africa who write me Europe, like, fuck with my shit, like, for real, for real. That's nice. And and it's still growing. Uh, yeah, I was wondering what you, I don't think I asked you before, but what's your favorite, a couple of your favorite special songs? My favorite what? A couple, or a favorite or a couple of favorite special songs, 38 special songs that you have, that you like. Man, man, um, Spesh got some shit. He got, he got a lot of shit. Probably this song called Three, uh, These Three Words. It's a Stevie J, Stevie J. It's a, um, Stevie Wonder sample. It's fire. Um, that, he got this song, Venton. He got the, um, couple songs, like Venton and Venton, uh, part two. A song called Soul Food. Um, Spesh got a lot of shit, man. It's, it's hard to really narrow it down. Okay, okay. Yeah. But those are some of them. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, have you ever been in the, the studio or seen uh, A-Rab music? Because I know he's kind of associated with some of the dudes. one person I've never ran. Oh. I never ran into A-Rab music yet. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm what? Dudes, uh, but, yeah, I was wondering, what uh, what Jada songs do you really like? I don't think I asked you before. Every last one. But I um to be more specific, I would say um, Still Me, um, Why... Um, we gonna make it. Um, damn, it's it's so much, man. Uh, okay. Things that I've been through. Okay, yeah, 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 for sure. I'll I'll send you a couple of my favorite uh, Jada songs after we wrap this up. Uh, just a few more questions, man. Um, what uh, what's I mean, I know obviously if someone like killed your friend or your brother or whoever, obviously it would be up or things wouldn't be cool, but. But what's what's some things that could be done to like stop the violence or stop the bullshit going on like in your city or anywhere between gangs or this and that? I'm just wondering because I think people should try to work together to make money to put the city on or you know whatever to stop the nonsense. So what do you think? Like, man, um, I don't know, man. I hate to, it's sad to say that I don't know because it's really bad right now. Like this year, I want to say either this year or last year been our highest actually murder rate. Oh really? Wow. In Rochester? In history. Oh, wow. Yeah, last year we broke our record for murders, which ain't nothing to brag about. But oh, wow. we, we like our hist like um our high highest murder rate last year. But I, I guess like man, put the guns down, fight, man. People don't fight no more. People, you know what it is too. People scared of ass whoopings, like yeah. thing is on social media. They know when somebody fight, somebody pulling out the phone, they go record the shit, put it yeah, on the yeah. internet, and nobody want to have people laughing at them on the internet talking about how they got their ass beat. But yeah, back yeah. in the day, you might have, you, you, like you said, you win some, you lose some, but you live the next day. And like, you might even probably make up, like, you, you probably go fight with a friend and y'all probably be cool in two, three days. It's like, that's not, man, like, it's all right to, you know, fight and, like, lose sometimes. You yeah, can't yeah. win them all. Even Mike Tyson, Ali, they lost. You know, those are the greatest fighters in the world. Some the next man can get you sometime. Yeah, 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 totally. What I was wondering is, um, what's what's some of the biggest problems in Rochester where you're from? I was wondering, and what would you say to like the governor Kathy Hochul or uh, or Joe Biden? Like, you know, just as a th- theoretical thing, you know, like to solve some of the biggest problems. And what do you see those biggest problems are? You know what I mean? I just want to get your take on it. In my city specifically? Yeah. Yeah, you know where you're from. What's some of the biggest um, problems, and what do you think you can say to them, you know, in theory, to help solve some of the biggest problems? I say some is um more opportunities here, like, even for kids that's in, interested in music. Like, like, we know we don't have no media outlets. We don't got record labels here, and we don't have 100 good studios. I can name probably five or six that's really official then i could probably name you 10 that's pretty decent um even with police like we got a lot of dirty cops here i hate to say it like that but oh really we really do and i say that just to say that like fuck the cops like that but we got cops who, who really plant shit on people and you know really try to shoot at you and kicking your door that uh, like i was just with my barber the other day and he was telling me how somebody broke in a uh shop and it was the police and they stole everything in the in the they were selling sneakers out at the barber shop, and the police took all that shit. It was about five, six thousand dollars sneakers. Oh wow, that's crazy. So, what do you think? Maybe some more arts programs in the schools too, or something would help. Yeah, I think you gotta have programs in school. Obviously, with COVID, it's a lot of shit too, because 
there's not a lot of after school programs like that. Kids go to rec centers, um, for sports programs, more free sports programs. Parents can't afford for their kids to be in like that. Football costs money, man. Like that, you know, that, shit, that shit is a few dollars. You know, um, like you said, more shit in the schools, more community events, uh, even like the mayors and stuff stepping or the police being more friendly in the community and shit like that. Showing they face introduce so making people feel safe because a lot of people don't feel safe from the police and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, would you say that uh, the job situation is pretty bad? Because I know in like Buffalo, there's always run down, abandoned factories and all this stuff. Would you say maybe some good jobs manufacturing would help? Yeah, um, I think jobs proven here, but for a long time we we, we didn't have a, a great jobs. We had like Kodak. We're we're known Kodak. I don't know if you got familiar uh-huh. with Kodak with the camera. Yeah. Oh, uh, that started in Rochester. So um, Eastman Kodak is, is a Rochester thing. Yeah. So like that that was big, but that's kind of like downgrading and kind of fading. And um, also G we got GM General Motors, which is the cars and shit like that. But that plan is kind of dying. The good thing is. It's a lot of Amazon here now, so that's helping improve a lot of jobs. But like you said, even more opportunities, better pay. Our pay here, is like in Rochester, sucks. Like I know people that make twelve dollars here still an hour. Yeah, I don't know how somebody up. could feed their family off that. Yeah, that's not even enough to live. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, for your damn self, and then you got three, four kids. Like, yeah. How you how you live off yeah. that? Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, um, I just want to remind everyone, make sure you like this video, you drop a comment, and uh, you share. It helps support the channel and support everyone, so really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I remember my one of my favorite uh, Jadakiss uh, songs. It's called The Hope with Fabulous. Uh, A-Rap Music does the beat, but uh, everyone go check that out. It's, it's fire for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it was really good talking to you. I appreciate you tapping in. Um, I say we we're going to talk for 15 minutes. We wound up talking like 45 minutes, but I appreciate you, man, for sure. Um, anything else? We'll talk off. Uh, we'll talk yeah, no through problem. the text. But, yeah, anything else you want to tell the people? You know, man, just Sleep City 3 on the way. A lot of big features. Um, Burn right now is Dark Low, Sue Surf, Ishmael Raps, uh, Black Sinatra, um, the Beanie Siegel and Nature songs might be bonuses on there. It might, maybe not. I don't know. It might make the cut, maybe not. But also a couple other features in the cut. Um, me and Nate working on some new shit. He might be on the uh, the new album. We might even do a small E, like five, six songs together. Um, big show coming up. Me, Dave East, Beanie Siegel, Memphis Bleak, Freeway, Piff Jones, Black Sinatra, Baltimore, March 26th. Uh, we'll definitely be in the building. I think I'll be in uh, Virginia, eighth with Mozzie from the Bay. If you know Ma- Mozzie on fire right now, especially from the West Coast, um, doing some shit with him, and um, a lot more shit on the way, man. Announcements, just obviously, I don't like to say too much until everything's signed and everything on paperwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real good, man. And don't forget, uh, I don't think you mentioned, but don't forget that joint you got with Ransom, that World of Sin. That's like one of my favorites songs I've heard from you, man. That that shit is real nice, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's sure. old. That's like two, three years old and out of growth since then. But that's that's a personal song right there. I like and that, everything man. Everything I'm saying in that verse is some real shit. Yeah, for sure. What would you say your most uh, heartfelt song is? I don't I don't think I asked you, but what, what would you say it is? I was wondering. Um, I got this song called One Day, which is about my brother. Besides that, I got a song called Can't Go to Sleep. So I have two songs dedicated brother. I had a song called Can't Go to Sleep, which is like 10 years old. But um, I shot a dope ass video, and it's all about him. But a, like a year ago, I did a song called Can't Go to Sleep, which is always dedicated to him. And it, it's like a letter to him saying like everything I've been up to and shit like that and why God took him and a sucker took him all this and that and like everybody that's still holding them that's still showing love it's real personal it's um it was a joel santana b actually um, i could send that to you but that's that's my mo- most personal song good 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 yeah and uh let everyone know again how they can get your merch because i really like your merch man you got some really cool stuff in there thank you um you man youngsleep.com but also shoot me in man instagram 
Young Sleep 585, Twitter Young Sleep 585. Now it's TikTok 585, Facebook just Young Sleep. Shoot me a DM and I'll send it to you. I'm, I'm going to the process myself and you'll have that shit in three, four days. Yep, for sure, brother. I appreciate you, Young Sleep, man. I pre- wish you the best and, uh, you know, once you drop your album, hit me up. We'll talk again. All right, brother? Appreciate it. Absolutely. God bless you, man. DM- NYC. Thank you, brother. Salute you too. Thank you. God bless.